Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of Soul Talk with Sahar. The reason we started this um, series is to build bridges to bring people together. To bring people together so that they bring more awareness into their lives and to try and see the life from the soul point of view. So I am hoping that you will enjoy this. Please um, leave a message, text us, let us know where you're watching from, gives us a thumbs up or a heart. I would love both. Um, my guest tonight is Trans Channel Asandra. I'll bring her on in a minute. I think she is here. Let me invite her. Okay. Did you get that? Asandra gives me a thumbs up. If you got the invitation. Okay, I'm hoping she received the invitation. Thank you, Bianca, for being here. Are you going to translate for us tonight? Let me make sure Asandra is here. Asandra? Oh, okay, I'll send it again. Okay, hold on everybody. Works and we are trying to get it to work. They were being added. Oh, you do see her in the chat window. I don't yet. Okay. Oh. Hey. Oh, great. Hey, Asandra. Hi. Oh, brilliant. We're on. Isn't it a miracle when technology works like it's supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Soul Talk with Sahar. I'm very oh. excited to have you live. And um, I just want to give a small introduction about what the series is about and a small introduction about you. Great. So we are all on a spiritual path. It's like a journey of awareness. We're here to grow um, before we leave this planet. But right now, it is the right time for us to move forward because the consciousness has changed. And what a better person that knows about consciousness than Asandra. Asandra is a trans channel. She's also an artist. She attended Parsons Design School. She has been a professional channel for more than 34 years. Um, she also is a painter. She is regularly on exhibitions. Recently, she's had more than 27 exhibitions. Her art is also channeled. Asandra, I am fascinated with you today as, as much as I was when we first met. Um, because to me, you represent something incredible. How does it feel to be in touch with spirit 24 <laughs> seven? Um, you're assuming that I'm in touch with spirit 24 seven. I mean, in some ways we all are. We are. I think we are. He is, are we conscious that we're with spirit 24 seven? So um, I think people make the assumption that I'm always aware I do feel that when I have when I have the consciousness to remember that, then yes, I am. Um, but you know, I fall out of that just like everybody else does. You know, I get in my head like everybody else does. But maybe I make more of an effort regularly because I'm aware. Well, if I call on my guides every day, just generally, that's going to make my day better. So why not just begin the day with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, but you know, like when people ask me, is that your psychic opinion or is that your opinion? I normally say it's one and the same because I think you try and maintain, um, that connection. It almost becomes second nature. I'm not suggesting you're always in trance, but I am suggesting that there is that connection as subtle as it may be. And I think this is what also inspires you and inspires your art because I am absolutely fascinated with your art. I really am. And I think, I think it's rather unusual that you can channel master guides, you can channel information 
but you also channel kind of very unusual abstract shapes that give a lot of information in a painting. So for me, the two almost go together, but you do it superbly. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I just, well, thank you. And the thing about the art is that people often ask me if I channel my art. And so there's a little bit of a nuance there because I am a trained artist and I do have an artistic talent. So it really is me, the personality. So when I'm making a painting, it's actually about what I'm experiencing. So it's not just generically channeling art uh, because even a person without an artistic channel could channel music or art or writing or anything. But so I'm working, I would say as an artist, I'm working with spirit and they're inspiring me, but I'm using my own aesthetic sense. Our intuition is the same thing because we're not coming from our ego structure, our you know sort of personal idea about that. We put we naturally have trained ourselves to put aside our opinions and our ideas and let some higher consciousness come through us. And you're doing that. I'm doing that. Other healers and psychics and intuitives are hopefully doing that. You know so that. You know, oftentimes I will tell a client, look, what I'm telling you now is not my opinion. I don't really care. <laughs> yes. I'm just telling you what I'm getting because I think sometimes I might tell them something really wonderful and they think I'm making it up to make yes. them feel good. And I'm like, I don't have an opinion about this. Yes. I'm just telling you, this is what I'm getting and that's fantastic. You know? Yes, yes. But I think what I find unusual, we kind of started this the wrong way around, but I'm so excited to talk about your art. Oh. In fact, I am wearing one of your paintings, if everybody yeah. can see this. This is all the unusual shapes and forms that Asandra does. And recently, she's also been commissioned, so her art goes on scarves, on shawls. And I love this shawl. Why, where do the shapes come from? You know, sometimes in meditation, I get a lot of unusual shapes. Maybe this is why your art interests me. Well, I think as an artist, I love patterns and textures and symbols. I've always been interested in symbolism, intuitively. Like in African culture, the African fabrics, you see something called edinkra, and these symbols, they all mean something. And um, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. Anyway, what I'm doing is, I'm because I'm living in California now, there's so much beautiful nature around me. So... I think that that is subconsciously lending Filtering. itself to the form. Yes. But the shapes to me are a language. In fact, I did a series of um, paintings on paper called the forgotten language. And to me, that's the language that we speak universally. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at a symbol and you're going to have a visceral response to a symbol, a color, a texture, a pattern. And that's universal in all cultures. So I'm trying to speak that language that's universal as an artist. Yes. And maybe also as a conduit for spirit is that this is a universal message. You know, we are all interconnected in the light, in energy, in consciousness. And that's how we are evolving as beings. So as an artist, that's, what I'm, that's the place I'm always coming from. But I'm inspired by texture, color, patterns. And because I'm in California now, there's so much abundance. To inspire you beauty that but I don't realize it when I'm doing the art you know it's it's not until I'm done I go oh that's the tides or that's the ocean or that's the mountain interesting or that's the morning light I don't know that when I'm doing it because I'm not being literal oh you yeah know, I'm just you know it's just coming through <laughs> yes and actually that's the fun of it is the discovery is that I don't know what it's going to be until it's like your dreams yes. you know you're interpreting that's nice your that's interesting yes I think of them as sort of dreams that are coming into form. 
anyway, I appreciate that you appreciate that. No, I agree. I, 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 you know, they're almost meditative. And I think the thing that got me into your paintings before we move on, I wanted to ask yes. you, why are they all on, on wood? Is there a reason or a purpose? As well, a... I didn't always. That's a sort of recent thing. And uh, first of all, wood working on wood panels for artists is sort of a new material. So it's more available now. But the reason why I switched from canvas to wood panel is twofold. Um, one is that it's a material. I do. A, I invented sort of a process of making these large scale stamps mm -hmm. and not stencils, but stamps. And right. so to have a hard surface is easier to work. To have, on. yes, absolutely. So I, I just love that feeling of working on wood. And it also just practically to ship it or to store it. It's it's going to endure longer than yes. canvas, which can get torn or get, you know, lumpy or whatever. And, um, and I've just kind of sort of developed a love for wood, you know, just yeah. working on wood. It can take a lot of abuse, so you can be more experimental. And I just love the way it looks. So uh, I do. I just want to say hello to Gitano. He's joining us. I, I, oh, love, I, I love to touch the wood. I love to touch because I have, I bought a couple of paintings of yours and I love to yes. touch them every now and then, you know, to feel the wood, but also to feel the paint over the wood is a different yeah. experience. You know, I wouldn't be touching the canvas, the paintings on canvas, for example. Well, I think the wood is so sensual, you know, it really calls you to it. And, and if you own the painting, you can, you can have the privilege of touching yes. it. If you're in a gallery, they probably ask no, you to leave. I know, if you but it's mine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm home with my work. I, I'm touching it every day because I'm working on it. So for me, it's a very sensual yes. experience of that material. Yeah, they are. And I find it's almost untracing the language, if that makes sense. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to kind of begin to understand the symbols. Speaking of symbols, I find your cards are absolutely amazing. Of course, Asandra is the author of this wonderful book called Contact Your Spirit Guides. And the book comes with a set of cards that you can cut out at the end. And they are good because they're not about prediction. They're more about the soul journey from the soul perspective. Am I right? Yeah. Is that okay to talk about yes. them in this way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Definitely. I mean, you're someone who can appreciate them. Oh, actually. I mean, look at them. They're really getting, but I love them because there's, they're, I think I just got them when, the, when your book first came out. But this is when the shapes started coming in, you know, triangles, obviously, the stars, 3D star, the sun. And this is when I began to see maybe the link between your cards, who you are as an artist kind of merge. Because I don't yes. think a lot of people appreciate how intuitive lives, you know, I've kind of spent like 15, 20 years behind the table giving sessions to people. And I realized like, right. life went by. And you're, you right. seem to be doing it twice, because you give channeled readings, but you are also an accomplished artist. Has it been difficult to sustain both lifelines, life paths? Yes and no. I mean, that gets very personal because there's, as a child, I just dreamed of being an artist. Yes. There was no concept of being a medium. I didn't even know what that was. Yes. Uh, so I guess the universe arranged a way for me to, um, to be self-employed, to do something that is helping Others. other people yeah. that I could feel good about. And, and again, I'm cultivating that spiritual energy and then using it in my work. So it, it's, you know, I try to keep it as balanced as possible. And sometimes I'll just try to take off a few days in a row so I can just paint every day. But sometimes I'll just do a little bit of painting on a day when maybe I've scheduled clients so that I'm always engaged with the painting. So yes. I do that as much as possible. But yes. I think there is a relationship between the two for sure. I want to welcome everyone. Hello, Khulud. Hello, Sahar. Thank you for watching us. My guest tonight is trans channel and artist, Asandra from California. Um, it's probably too early for you, Asandra, right now, because it's almost, you know, it's in the evening here in Dubai. But um, when we talk about consciousness and the soul's path, can you tell us a little bit about the new consciousness? 
so that we can understand uh, perhaps on a deeper level our lives and what we're going through right now. Yeah, I think that this is a, a, a time where we have an extraordinary opportunity because there is so much, first of all, we're interconnected in a way we've never been historically because of media, social media and digital media, electronic media, which we're proving right now. So we can all talk to each other. And that is really an extraordinary event in the development of humanity. And along with that, we're, we're seeing an, an exacerbation of the chaos mm -hmm. and confusion and uncertainty in the collective mindset all over the world. To me, that's the opportunity for conscious to be, consciousness to be elevated. And one of the things that I see with a lot of my clients and friends is that they get very worried about, oh, what's going on in the world? Yes. Oh, when is it going to be okay? And I'm like, whoa, the reason you're here now is because you, are, you have the opportunity to be a pioneer of consciousness and to give your light and love to the world. I like you know, that. I don't understand. Pioneer of consciousness. Is, yeah, please tell us more. Well, this is like a pet peeve of mine because I see people that have been on their path for decades and then yeah. they just throw it away because some terrible thing happens in the world. And I'm like, you're missing the point. You're not waiting for some utopia to happen so you can live a perfect life. You're here to share your gifts with the world. And Absolutely. this is the time in the world to keep it. So what do you do? You don't try to change the world. You don't try to heal it or fix it. You live in your light. You live in your light every day to the best of your ability. And you know, even if that means you're just nice to the checkout person at the grocery store, yes. you know, that giving, maybe that person just needs a little kindness yes. that day. And yes. you have shared your, it doesn't mean that you have to cure cancer today. You're just giving love, you're giving light and there's more love and there's more light on the planet. That's how we do it. We do it every day by making some kind of minuscule effort. And, you know, obviously you can see I feel very passionate about this because I'm sort of tired of people going, oh, when's it going to get better? I'm and like, complaining, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, come on, what yeah. is your life for? Yeah. You're not going to be forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have to get the point that, that we have to use every moment to be in as much light and love and beauty. Or if we're suffering, to heal ourselves and nurse our pain and find our way through it because that's also sharing light with the world when we're healing ourselves. Yes. So it, it's, you know, it's the yin and the yang of it. It's yes. the internal introspective and the external sharing the light. And I guess this is like whatever I've learned in all the decades of being a channel. And I've been on my path since I was a teenager. So really this is most of my life. This is what I, this little nugget is what I've learned basically yeah. is Live your life in as much consciousness and awareness as you can. And then you've done your very best to make, because there is no world, you know, it's, it's just energy and it's changing in every moment. And I do believe that like, if we could fast forward a thousand, 1500, 5,000 yeah. years from now, we're going to see a world that it looks completely different than now, because we're going to recognize that we're light beings and that we're multidimensional and we're not going to see it in this dense way that we see it. So the problem is our perspective is limited. We don't see the truth in every moment. And that's what we have to wake up to is not how, let's fix the world, but let's become more aware of what we really are as being. How you know, can we expand our perspective so that we don't get blinkered and stuck in our own micro reality, if you will? Well, I think it's, don't get stuck in your, don't listen to those thoughts in your head. I mean, they're there. Don't try to suppress them. Just stop indulging them, yeah. you know? And I know, listen, I'm susceptible to my own personal stuff, you know? So I'm not saying like I'm a master of this no. by any stretch of the imagination, but I, because I have to qualify that because I don't want people to think like somehow I'm perfect. I'm definitely not. But I think the thing is that you make that effort, you get up in the morning and you call on the light and you call on spirit. However you go about that, you start your day that way. And then you try to live present and conscious 
and be in the moment. Do what and, you can not, right now, as opposed to distract you yourself and distract moment. your thoughts. Yes. And that means letting go of a lot of stuff. And I say that because personally, I'm always going through this. You know, when I get into what I call the woe is me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, my personal woe, oh, poor me, because blah, 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 blah. You know, that's a dangerous place. And I just call it the woe is me syndrome. Yeah. And I, I try to catch myself in the act of doing that, like, oh, poor me, because blah, blah, blah. And let, going of, let go of that and be in the moment. And then just sort of in that moment, we're rededicating ourselves to what is real within ourselves. Sometimes you need, sometimes to, you need to whinge. I don't believe in suppressing the whinging, but as you right. said, not, not to indulge, you know, like get it out, get over yourself, get back on track. Get it out. Well, you know what? I've been doing journaling for decades mm -hmm. and that's like my personal way. Yes. Because of venting, I the agree with you. I can, as you say, winch. I can moan and complain and I can put it out there and no one's going to ever see it. And I could say exactly what I want to say. And very then it's good advice. Done. Yeah, very good advice. Yeah. And, I, and to do it regularly, you just kind of purge that gunk. Yeah. And you see your, your patterns and your tendency. So I do think you need an outlet, you know, whether it's a therapist or whatever you're doing, you need an outlet for it but you don't want to carry it around yes i totally agree because if you keep talking about it even to best friends you're only reinforcing the negative you're only reinforcing your limitations uh, rather than liberating yourself to receive a new idea or move in a new direction so get it yeah. out but it's a very good advice get it out on a journal so that you can see your own patterns rather i don't believe in discussing ones or hanging one's blueprint emotional blueprint out you know like laundry on a on a laundry line I, I think it's rather intimate the way we grow because we grow through emotional experiences and you know your thoughts and your emotions reflect to you where you are at so you have a lot of material to work with as opposed to go around in loops and forget that you're here to kind of move forward and spread light most importantly to share your gift and I, I agree with you I think everyone has a gift and sometimes the gift is as uplifting someone who's really down that day. Because I noticed that right now, with this energy, everything with this new consciousness, if you will, everything is multiplying very fast in either directions. Oh, yeah. So if you do something yeah. good, it kind of sends ripple effects. If you connect with yeah. someone in a new way, the connection is even deeper and it draws yeah. things and you know, whatever projects or people um, or goals that you want to manifest a lot faster. And in, in my mind, I keep hearing the word collaborate, collaborate. So it's not mm -hmm. about living in a silo and competing with others. Do, do you get that? It's all about collaboration, supporting so that everybody can be uplifted and, and you know, raise their consciousness. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. I mean, because, because ultimately, if we are one energy, we are interconnected, that's the natural evolution, is that it's not every man for himself. It is, okay, you know, that's why, that's why when a person's on a path of consciousness, they have an impulse to do something meaningful. And, you know, what I find with my work as a channel is that when I'm trying to explain to people that don't know what, either they don't know what channeling is or they don't understand that I'm not trying to contact your deceased relatives i'm working with that's a very guy. good point that's a very good point so yeah we must make the distinction so you're not right. a medium you're a channel who connects now, with higher energy guides yes you know those are synonyms medium or channel sure it's just that most people they look well, at what's pop yeah. in our culture and see the mediums that are popular are the ones that do, that sort of get messages in their from head spirit. from, yeah. a, well, actually mostly from relatives, relatives. because that's okay. what you see on TV. And so when people hear I'm a medium, they're like, oh, can you get in contact with my uncle Bill? And I'm like, well, that's not really what I do. And then once I start trying to explain it, I lose them because they don't know what I'm talking about, you know, yeah. that it's higher, it's teachings and higher guidance. And so when people, the clients that generally come to me come because mostly they're seeking their sole purpose. Mm -hmm. They're either seeking a confirmation of what that is, 
or, or encouragement or more insight. And so the kind of clientele that I've cultivated are people that are looking for that. Mm -hmm. They really want to be purposeful, which is ties into what you're saying, the collaboration. So that when you're on a path of higher consciousness, you're not just looking for like, how can I get more money or how can I be, you know, whatever. You're looking for the way you can give yes. to the world, how you can express your light. And most of the people that I work, I would say all the people I work with, ultimately, that's what they want. They want that sense of purposefulness. They're not looking just for, tell me what's going to happen in my life. Because my work doesn't work that way. It's like, I always say to people, you may get some predictions. I don't know. But you're going to get teachings and guidance. And if that's what you want, I'm your person. If you want someone to tell you what's going to happen, there are people that do that better than me. I'm not that person. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it's not that I'm against that. No, <laughs> I, think that's great. I, I understand. But you're talking perhaps about the people who are um, on their spiritual journey at a, such a point that, you know, they've done this, they've done that, they've been there, you know, maybe they've got everything in life, but something seems to be missing. And I think what, because uh, I get that with my clients, and I yeah. think what is missing is knowing what your sole purpose is, because the fulfillment comes from trying to, from expressing, not trying, from actually expressing your essence, who you are, what you're meant to do. Exactly. That's so well said. I mean, actually, I love what you just said there, because expressing your essence Thank you. to because spirit always says, you know, to know what you're meant to do, you have to know who you are. Absolutely. And they're not talking about your personality or your memories or your identity in the world. They're talking about your inner awareness. Absolutely. And that's what you're saying. If you have that inner awareness cultivated, then you overflow with this sort of inspiration yeah. to express it. Yeah. And then you can't help it. So when people come, they're either already doing something meaningful or they want a confirmation or they're just looking for further guidance. And sometimes people have these really enormous dreams and they want to follow them, but they're scared to take these giant leaps in trust. So they might come to me as a medium and go, am I crazy and having this grand <laughs> idea? You know, so spirit will say, no, you're not crazy. You know, you're being guided to do it and leap in, you know. And if they, if they are like off track, they'll tell them that too. You know, I mean, occasionally that'll happen. But more often than not, that person is having this huge inspiration and they might, be, they might have some trepidation to follow the impulse. And they, you know, where in the world are they going to find that confirmation? So that's one of the things that I provide as a medium is by bringing in their higher guides that can give them this kind of confidence and, and encouragement to do that thing that is that they're being inspired to do from a much higher plane. Yes, absolutely. If people, people only look to the outer world, they're not going to get that. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to get this, you know, I mean, I'm sure, I don't know what your background is when you started with your intuitive work, but I will tell you for me, when I started, I had zero support yeah. from the outer world. Like, yeah. I do mean a big fat zero. Yeah. But internally, the impulse was so powerful that I went, well, too bad. I'm doing it anyway, you know. Yeah. What, what, because mm, what I find you know, really I mean, difficult is, is forging the path because there isn't a career guidebook, you know, on what is the next step or what to do. You kind of have right. to make it up, but also be true to yourself. And I remember when exactly. we first met through, you know, my, my former mentor and, and friend, Marion Jose, um, and she told me that you channel and you channel master guides. And I thought, huh, because I've worked nearly for 15 years without knowing who my guides are. So I, I found that um, fascinating. And the guides that you connect with for the, on behalf of the client, is it normally their personal master guide or can one connect with any guide? Um, well, or do they kind you know, of for, come with the energy? I mean, according to the energy of the person or the client. Yeah, it's very individualized. But again, you know, the guides that I'm channeling have some comfort level in coming through me and I do with them. So I could channel a master guide that has a connection for a client, 
but they may go off on their own and find other guides that they have also have a connection with that I might not channel. Right. So it's not limited to who I channel for them, but I'm not channeling my guides for them. I'm channeling their guides. guides or... well, well, their guides, but their guides have to be comfortable coming yeah. through me. So yeah. I have to have some, some, you know, I'm not familiarity, but comfort with that guide. Right. So they may, they may meet a guide on their own that I don't channel. And that's I see. Fine. You know, okay. It's still relevant. Okay. I understand. But I felt it's mostly guides that are relevant to the person. In other yeah, words, it, they are really able to guide on their respective life path. You know, like I found all of your sessions were really relevant to me. It's not like any person can listen to them. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's particularly to my path. Like whenever I needed a push or a help, um, a helping hand, you know, I would, we would swap sessions and I'll get the guidance. And I very often listen to the recording and I do find it not only valid, but it just gives you that comfort that it resonates with the heart and you know, okay, this is the plan and I am on track. Am I putting that across? Oh, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Because the guides see us as who we really are. So they can, they're not seeing us the way you and I see each other. Like mm. first we see what we look like or what we hear like and it hear uh, what we sound like and maybe our opinions we formed of each other or whatever, our experiences, but yes. the guides see us as our true selves, which is our inner spirit. So they can see, they have a, it's like they have a big overview, mm -hmm. uh, like a bird's eye view of our spirit. So they see where we originated from, you know, some past life frequency and where we're headed as beings. Yes. But it's not, you know, I think people don't understand what that means because they're thinking it's very literal mm. because they don't see us through third dimensional linear time. So they're just seeing a huge energy field that is our current consciousness that is then informed by our point of origin, our past life experiences, our present moment experience, and where we're headed on our path. So all of that to spirit is one singular frequency but we interpret it as in linear time and yes. space. Yes. So sometimes it's hard to understand that, but that's why they can talk to us in such a profound way because they get the totality of who we are. They uh, get it. Yeah, I, I find that they are loving, but also practical. You know, it's not a romantic love. You feel the compassion, if you will, but sometimes they can be a little bit like, you know, get on with it and do that. You know, why are you whinging? <laughs> if, if need be, if I, you know, it's funny because there have been uh, some occasions where clients have just rejected a spirit guide because they didn't like that they were a little tough on them. Yeah. And they said, I don't like that guide. And sometimes <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, you know, but okay. there have been a few people that you know, Okay, Asandra, we've got a question from Bianca. She says she's just learning about all, this, all these things. So she's asking, yeah. so does Asandra help people to find their personal guide and inspiration? Yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. But I but want to really say what... it's not about finding their guide. It's more about giving right. them the message that can guide them from a soul point right. of view. Sorry, I answered exactly. that on your behalf, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, that's what I, I was basically going to say something like that, that it's really the spirit guides are helping them make the connection directly. Okay, does that and help, Bianca? Yeah. Sandra, can we take some questions from our viewers? Yeah. Are you up for that? Sure. Okay, Absolutely. guys, if, if, if you're listening, if you're watching, if you're with us in this live broadcast, if you have a question about a Sandra, um, please text it and, and we'll pick it up. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your cards? Like, how would you answer the questions now? Would you use your own intuition or would you use your cards? I keep getting this <laughs> card. Oh, um, you know what? I, I feel a little bad about this, but I actually haven't used my own cards in a while. That's fine. I don't, I don't have... No, but I don't have a good excuse for this, but I'm going to give you my bad excuse why I don't. Because I, I moved into a different apartment about a year and a half ago, and it's much smaller. And I used to have those cards out on a little altar. And then I would just pick a new card every day and say, what's my guidance for today? 
And so when I downsized, I sort of lost that little space. Oh, I understand. Space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put them away, and then we had like a fire and a mudslide. We had all this crazy stuff. Oh, yes, of course. I, I forgot about the of, fires. Yes, yes. But, but you're sort of reminding me that um, I find that when I pull those cards out and I do refer to them, because I almost forget that I have them. <laughs> and then when I ask them a question, it's always like, oh, yeah, right. Because the messages are so profound yes you know they were designed to be that way like you say it was designed to be higher guidance and then when i get it i'm like wow that's it, it clears it up for me whatever i might be stuck in yeah so i do find it helpful i i find that they take me um you know like superman way up and then i have a view of where i'm at so immediately yeah. the tension goes because they have very different energy from other um tarot cards they're not tarot um as i said and and this is what's um very practical about them they just take you higher up so that you don't take things personally but you also get the guidance that you need while you are in alignment with your path does that make sense for to me that's yeah, what I, they do i think when you look at those cards you immediately feel the presence of spirit and you feel, to me, I feel my guides there giving me that message. And, you know, with other cards, like tarot cards, it's, it's more complex. You have to sort of understand how it relates to the position it's in, and et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. With the spirit guidance cards, you're getting an overall frequency, a vibrational frequency, and then you can sort of get the more specific message in it. And it's really powerful because it, that message will hopefully sink in and will inform, you know, the question that you're asking. So I encourage everybody to go and get those cards. <laughs> I really do. And also you've mentioned um, pathfinders, you've mentioned yeah. healers. So can you tell our viewers what pathfinders are? Because you have master guide, guide, pathfinder. A pathfinder is a type of guide that helps you find what you need on the path. So that's a guide that will help you find the resources. Mm -hmm. um, it could be something as simple as helping you find the perfect parking spot where you're going somewhere. But it could also be the larger resources that you need, something you're looking for in, in a more tangible level. So that's, that's the, the pathfinder just think that's the guide who helps you find the things I need on my path. You know, a healer obviously helps you with healing, internal or physical. Master guides are the ones that bring teachings and higher guidance. So those are some of sort of the generic terms that we have for, for the different roles that spirit guides yeah. play in our lives. What is the paradigm shift card about? It's generally, it's about moving from one belief system to another. So it's so like a huge transition making, rather than a yeah, change. Like a quantum, a quantum leap in a way. Yeah. And the life purpose? Well, it really depends on the question the person's asking, but, um, you know, that one's obviously about knowing or maybe it's a confirmation. It depends on your question and the layout, but it might be a confirmation of your life purpose. But they're really I mean, easy to use because you shuffle and you choose four cards. You cut ones. Do you cut ones? I don't normally cut one. Sometimes I do. I Should use, we? Yeah. Okay. With your non-dominant with your non-dominant hand. Okay. So, so I, I right put them down with, your left. with the left hand. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I do put them down. I cut once, and then you pick four cards: one, two, three, four. Um, yeah. And it's pretty simple, and they're really easy to handle. I think our viewers are missing the Italian translation. So I'm still studying my Italian, and you guys, you have to study your English. <laughs> Bianca is helping. She's like texting like mad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there are, two, there are two ways. The, you can either do a spread, a four-card spread, or, as you mentioned, you pick one card up every day, and you ask, like, what kind of day am I going to have? Or just what's the message for today? Oh, just what's the message for today? Yeah. Okay. What is the message for today? Can you give us a message for today in terms of 
the changes that all of us are going through because the planet is going through. Well, when you said that, the word that popped into my mind was timelessness. Mm -hmm. You know, the eternal. I think that if we start operating in timelessness, that doesn't mean that we don't keep our appointments and <laughs> keep calendars and clocks and all that, but we enter into a realm that takes us out of the third dimensional and the linear, and we enter into a timelessness where we can really connect with our spirit. Because if we're stuck in mundane time and space, then we're stuck, you know? We're stuck in general in whatever condition we're stuck in. And I, I think rising up into the timeless liberates us. And it takes us into um, a, a consciousness where we can start to live more fully as beings. You Te know, technically, I, I just, practically, how do we do that? Are you saying not to limit ourselves by time or not to run our lives literally by the clock? No, um, no, because I, I'm, I'm someone who's very responsible and I'm like really good with time and time management. So if a client called me 20 minutes late, I wouldn't be there to answer the phone. So time is important, but I, would, I think just in general to have an awareness that we're not bound by time and we're not bound by space, that we understand that we are, we use time and clocks and calendars to navigate in the physical yes. relationship with each other. But ultimately our consciousness dwells in timelessness. And I think if we, you know, that goes back to our original conversation is that if we are rooted in timelessness, you know, if we're, living more in our consciousness, that's timelessness. And if we understand that that is our true place for our soul to be, we will free ourselves up from the suffering. Are and you, that's the whole point, he wants to suffer. Are you, can I take it on a different level? Are you saying that sometimes people take it personally? You know, why hasn't this happened to me? Why has it happened to everyone, but it hasn't happened to me? And they think or they seem to think that they're running according to some agenda, like, you know, they're going to die if this doesn't happen by a certain age. And what I understood from what you're saying is that stuff will always come at the right time, but let's not kind of bind ourselves, you know, to a certain age or a certain year when something should have happened. Yeah, well, for, first of all, I'm guilty of having done that too, of going, why don't I have blah, blah, blah by now? And it's ridiculous because it doesn't matter. That thing is not going to help you to wake up. You know, you just think that's what it is. But it, it's more like if we live in consciousness, then we're whole and we're complete. I'm, I no. just want to interrupt. Someone is asking, what cards are you using? There are cards designed by Asandra, and this is her book, and the cards come with the book. They still come with the book, Asandra? Yes. So you have a template of how to use them, and, and the cards are really lovely. Mine are really worn out, and they mm -hmm. are not tarot cards. They are channeled symbols and they help guide you on a much higher level um, from a soul level, like really take you all the way out yeah. so that you can see what your life is about. Um, right. What I meant is that, you know, the older, I don't know whether it's the older or the more aware I am, it just seems to me um, that I might have spent a lot of energy fighting myself in the past where it was completely unnecessary because there is synchronicity. You know, and especially when you're a student or a graduate, you think you're running out of time and you should do this by that age and do this by that age. But now that I'm living in timelessness, it's almost that things are just unfolding. They're falling in the right place. People are coming to help, to support. And I don't need to do anything except navigate. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, that's the ideal condition to be living in. And I think it's something we need to aspire to because we're not going to be perfect at that. We're going to fall back into those old, you know, I want, I, I need, I'm, I'm lacking. In, you, you know, because it's a condition of lack. But, but if we live in that sort of fluidity of consciousness, 
we know we're being guided, whether you call it spirit guides or God or angels or whatever you want to call it. You know, you know that you're being guided. You know that you're on your higher path just by virtue of being born. You know, the fact that we've been born means that we're already on our path. We're not looking for it. We're there. And so when we take those limitations out of the equation, then we can be in the harmonization of the path and trust that the way forward is rightful. And spirit often gives this example of, you know, if somebody gives you a present, it's so much nicer if they wrap it beautifully yeah. <laughs> and you can unwrap it. Yeah. Because part of the fun is unwrapping the present. You don't, and, and if they give you a wrap present and then tell you what's in it, they've ruined the surprise. Yeah. So they're saying, the joy of life is the surprise. You know, that's the synchronicity. That's the, 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 the present Got it. that that's comes interesting. When you're yes. in the present. You know, the present comes when you're in the present. And then when something shows up in your life, you go, oh, it's a miracle. Or, oh, it was synchronous. Because we're present. And then we're not sitting there going, I don't have, or when's it going to come? Because then it never comes, of course. Yeah. And we're just sort of allowing consciousness or God or spirit or whatever. Spirit yeah. calls it the spirit of the universe because it's all, you know, inclusive. Yeah. yeah. Spirit of the universe then can show us the path. And then we can be, hopefully, spend more time in the enjoyment of that path. Okay, Asandra, you've got a question. It says, um, is it right to say that these cards are for a soul meditation, for the soul's meditation? Yeah, I think, I think that's a great way to look at it because, like you were saying, you, you ask a question, you get the reading, it gives you a larger overview, and then you can meditate on it to get clarity because it's not a literal interpretation of something. It's, okay, now I have this broader perspective of my issue. Now I can take it and I can meditate on it. So yeah, I think they're, you know, I just want to give a little description of how those cards came about because please, I was, the book was all, you know, it was based on a desktop manual on how to channel that I used to sell to my clients, you know, and my guides really told Which me. Which was very good because I've used it and this is how I started exactly. channeling and I taught my husband to channel and he kept oh, God knows, like 11 journals, you know, he used to channel every day. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, I didn't know that. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So, you know, I mean, I just wanted to give people a really, like, let me make it easy. Let me make a how-to, A, B, C, D. Let me uncomplicate it. My guides were like, you got to get this published. You know, they kept they badgering me for years, you know. Finally, anyway, it all kind of came together, and the publisher, Schiffer Publishing, came together, and it all sort of flowed. And so... They wanted me to add about 20,000 words, which actually is a pretty time-consuming thing, and they gave me a deadline. So I'm reworking the book, and then you have to sort of format it. And I, would, I, I decided to design the look of it, even though I wasn't supposed to, and they let me do that. So when I get to the very end and I'm done with everything, I hear my, my, my doorkeeper guy, which is the guy that looks after me while I'm in trance. She said to me, you need to design some spirit guidance cards to go with the book. And I was like, oh my God, I just freaked out, you know, because I went, first of all, I just worked so hard on this thing for a year. And secondly, and, and I you weren't you were planning to have cards. Yes. Yes. I remember that. So yes. yeah. Cause I think you were the person I showed them to and went, yes. is this crazy? Or do they make sense? Cause you were the authority for me on that. And then I didn't know how to do it. And I was trying to copy tarot cards and I went, no, that's not it. And then I got so frustrated and I got really freaked out. And then one day, I don't know, a symbol came in my head. It was that first card of birth. And I was like, it was an abstract symbol. And I went, this is crazy, but I'm going to go with it. And then, then it just flowed like that. Like mm -hmm. the symbols just came out. Amazing. And I realized, yeah, it was just, and then it was done. And I put the whole book together and the whole thing got, you know, kind of miraculously and very beautifully published. Yes. Better than I had even imagined it would be. It's so nicely done. It was. It really so, is. And I love the colors. Well, you, you know, know the colors sort of kind of, yeah, stimulate something. Okay, guys, we've got 10 minutes. If anyone's got a question, maybe I can pick the card and then you can give your interpretation. Does that work? I don't know. Any questions, oh, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're trying to see what they can ask. <laughs> what, what can we ask with these cards? 
um, I'm trying to give a clear picture, you know, of what you can ask. Oh, or... I got okay. I have a question because we're a collective now. So maybe you can say, what is the message for those of us that are gathering in this group? You know, this on the bridges of light. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So tell me the question again so everyone can hear it. What is the message? What is the higher purpose for all of us that are gathering together in Bridges of Light? Not just Fantastic. today, but in overall. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to cut once. So do I take one card or four cards? Let's take one. Ooh. What does it say? Karma. Karma? Oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's one of the heaviest cards. In yeah. There. Okay. Listen. Karma. I'm going to give an interpretation intuitively. I'm going to say that we are all clearing our individual and collective karma by doing light work in the world. And that's what we're doing. We're clearing the karma for the collective by clearing consciousness into the world. Does that it's, make sense, everybody? Karma. Yeah. Yeah. It's karmic work and it's good karmic work, you know, and actually I would not have imagined that card would come up, but but when you think about it, that's the real work is the karmic work is like, let's clear out the gunk of the past individually and collectively, and let's bring light into the world. We're not perfect. We're never going to be, we're not trying to be, we just want to give light to the world and we're going to do the best that we can. Can it also mean, Sandra, that um, maybe you know, because for me also karma is the total sum effect of all the decisions and all your journey. Could it be that somehow we're all connected and we are, oh, we, we are converging, if you will, yes. that Gitana has yes. created this like platform that. and... Yes, I like that. That is a very good, uh, you know, again, that's why these cards yeah. are very broad. I don't tell anyone, I mean, it comes with a list of suggested meanings in the book. Yeah. But they're suggested because, again, your intuition, like you're saying, well, maybe we're all karmically connected. Well, yeah. yes, we are. Or so we wouldn't be gathering. Yeah, I so, think um, with any cards, um, you take the guidance, but also as you use them, because they're almost like living beings. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you interact with them, so they give you the information. So you have the interpretation that was given in the book, but as you use them, the cards begin to have a personal meaning to you. Well, I always found that actually with any card. And sometimes there's a combination that always comes up together. Mm, um, true. Yeah, so that kind of begins to tell you something. There is something strange happening tonight, you know, as I look at you and in the camera, I don't know if you can. I, I can see your aura and I can see my aura. Are you seeing that? That's the first time that it's ever happened to me. No, but I'll take your word for it. I'm sort of near. <laughs> I'm sort of nearsighted anyway, so I'm like... Uh, no, I'm you know. the sometimes I come close, but, <laughs> but really I can see, um, well, you know, it's almost... Yeah, actually, I do, see, I do see it around you now. Oh, my cat just showed up. Oh, so oh you... my cat is sleeping here. He's very happy sleeping. No. Let's I'm see gonna... you. Let's see you, pussycat. Well, she's... No? I don't know. She's, she's, she's particular. My, my, oh, cat, we... my cat is sleeping here. Here we go. Okay, we're going to share Here's... cats. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, what a gorgeous cat. Hello. Thank you. Well, mine is relaxed listening to us. Usually he likes to show oh. himself up. Um, yeah. So, Getting yeah, some, <laughs> somebody said, oh, wow, that means we're doing a great job working all together. I think so. Yes. And I think we're meeting different people and we're listening to the... Um, to the, oh wow, somebody says, Golden Brava says, you are both surrounded by so much light. Wow, thank you. So if you've thank enjoyed you. this so far, please encourage us, give us a thumbs up and don't be shy. I think they're shy to ask a question. I need a question, come on, give us a question. I wish someone would. <laughs> so we've asked a question for the group. Um, what about you? How do you get your own guidance, Sandra? Ah, that's a good one. Um, I would just say that I have to listen intuitively like everybody else. You know, I, I used to have a medium that did what I do to go to, but he's not really available very much anymore. So when I could not, and so I used to go to him like four times a year. It was really nice for many years, but then I just needed to um, 
I needed to just sort of start paying more attention to to being present and I'm pretty intuitive, you know, I do really you are. feel like and you, you can me. feel the uh, energies yeah, from the I, signature and writings. You've got a I'm question. Generally... You've got a question, Sandra. You you have a question from Bridie Hughes. Bridie is a medium, very well established. Also, she's part of the Finhorn Foundation. So she's asking you, hi, Asandra, do you sit every day to channel? And then she says, really enjoying the show. Well, thank you, Bridie. Do you sit well, and channel work, every day? I usually work with clients f about five days a week. And so I'd say formally channel five days a week. Other than that, no. <laughs> Got to have some time off. <laughs> You know, but yeah, I mean, I, I actually work with clients generally Monday to Friday. But Bridie to Asandra is a trans channel. So she doesn't sit and go into trans herself. But I just wanted to clarify that. But she does right. um, channel by way of keeping a journal. Because I think sometimes, you know, you do. You start writing or you don't. I do sometimes. You know, I go no. into, like you taught me, I go into a meditative state and I bring my, no. uh, my guide. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what? Honestly, I'm... I work very hard at what I do, and, I, and I, it takes huge volumes of energy to be a deep trans channel. Yeah, it's so awesome. I'll days off. Yeah. I am off and playing. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. So, you know, what I mean? like I'm really concentrated when I'm working with clients, but I'm not going to do that seven days a week. It would no. be too exhausting. No, you're absolutely right. Because we do use exhaust, actually, our hormones, pineal gland, all of that. I don't know yeah. if... Um, People in general are aware that intuitive people do use their nervous system and their hormones yeah, quite a lot. Th thank you, no. Bridie, for oh. watching. And um, Bianca is also saying she's seeing our aura and she's seeing a yellow. Well, yours, Asandra, is going white, yellow, green, white, yellow, green. It's just like really? pulsating. Yeah. I've never seen oh. that live. <laughs> so this has been an, an amazing um, experience. Yeah, thank you. Um, can we ask um, how will we, um, I want to ask like a useful question, but I don't know how to, to phrase it. Okay, you've got a question. How do you replenish yourselves? Golden Bravo is asking. Well, that's a great question. Actually, I, painting, making art is very important for me. And Taking nature, walks in, yeah, because I always see you walking. You're a very good photographer yeah. as well. Thank you. Thank you. I love to be, I live near the beach now, so walks in nature, going to see art shows, socializing. Um, you I know, find, just living. you know, Sandra, water takes everything away. You know, I was oh, really, I love it. yeah, I was really happy when we were in Venice. I, I couldn't hear a psychic thing, as it were, and my mind was really yeah. clear. My antennas were clear. It, it's almost like it sucks all the dampness or all the static out. Very powerful. I, yeah. I need the ocean. I really need to, even though here it's too cold to swim in it, at least just taking a walk by the ocean is very powerful. And I think just like living your life and enjoying and being happy, you know, art making is very important for me. Being in nature is very important. Socialize, dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love dancing. I mean, and listening to music and anything that can make you feel alive. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I wash um, my hands if I'm really drained. I just put them around a tap or just put them in oh. salt water, let the water drain out. Um, somehow around the wrist, I don't know why. I just feel it releases a lot of things. But the best thing is, you know, to sit under a tree, hug a tree or go to the beach and put your feet in the water. Um, that, and, that does it. I would also add that when you're done working, you're done. Yeah. Like, you've got to turn it off. Yeah, I, I just don't remember like, what I say most of the time because you can't carry right. that weight, you know. It just comes through, it's for you. You do what you want with it, you know. Yes, yes. And then when you're done, you're done. And that's the key to replenishing is you switch know when off. it's finished, switch off. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So what's um, the, the thing that I wanted to ask is, like, where is humanity going from here? Can I ask that? Or how are we doing on our path as a collective? Ah. <laughs> is that too, too big, too deep for a... Hmm? 
Well, that's a big question. Uh, I'll take one card. Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. What is it? Higher do? self. Can... Higher self. I... Higher self. Oh. Well, okay. Then, then the answer to that question is that we're all evolving into a higher consciousness, which is really what spirit has been talking about. So we're you know, doing the, it. The, we're doing it. We're doing it. It's just that people, if people expect everything to happen in their lifetime, forget it. That's not the way it works. You know, not everybody's going to wake up right now in the 21st century. Is that you know, what you meant by timelessness? I want to go back to that. That nothing here yeah. is wasted. It goes into the soul span, not necessarily just yeah. this life. Yeah, that's a good point, because if people are waiting for some utopian reality, they're going to wait forever, because it's not going to happen. There is no external utopia. There are always going to be souls that incarnate, that are incarnating at, a, at maybe a, a, a lesser degree of awareness, and they need to move through the human dimension to wake up. And instead of judging them, let's give them the space to do that and Lovely. contribute our life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is for everybody. And we have to just let everybody develop at whatever level they're able to do it. Lovely. And that's it. Lovely. You know? On that note, I'm afraid we must wrap it up. Thank you so much, Asandra. Would you come back at some point in the future and, and be, okay, be my guest again? Yeah, maybe we'll gather the questions ahead of time and we'll just go through them then. Wonderful. I, let's play it by ear. We'll see what comes up. Don't worry. We did really great today. I really enjoyed having you. And I hope um, that viewers did too. So leave a comment. I will come back and answer your comment. I'm not sure if they have another program now. So... So we must be off. And thank you for watching Soul Talk with Sahar. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Sandra. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.